I've been working on um, treatments for neuromuscular disease using gene therapy for, well, I guess since 1996. And my job today is to introduce the, the um, current progress that our field in FSHD research has made in developing and thinking about how we're developing uh, treatments for this disease. So I'm going to give a, a short, um, hopefully short, presentation on how we're thinking about uh, developing therapies for FSHD as a field. And then we're going to bring up, uh, including myself, nine other scientists from different fields, different companies or academic labs to sit as sort of a, a, as June described it, a speed dating panel for scientists here. So everybody's going to get a few minutes just to talk about some of the concepts behind what they're doing. So some of this, some of this stuff you've already heard from uh, Dr. Belyev's talk, which was fantastic. And so I'm, I'm going to reiterate, though, just because this is a complicated disease. Um, so I started working uh, in the FSHD field about 10 years ago. And at that time, in 2007, the, the state of the field was shown here. Um, the disease cause was unclear. We didn't have any models, good disease models for, for FSHD. And as a result, you might expect that there were no treatments then in the pipeline. And you know, this is, I, I think, a major reason for this is because FSHD turns out to be one of the most complicated genetic disorders that we know about. And it took many years and a lot of hard work from very talented and, and intelligent people to actually crack this case and figure out what, what causes FSHD. And I, I, I'm not going to go into the, the details of the mechanism because Dr. Belyev did such a beautiful job, but I will just reiterate the punchline, which is that the DUX4 gene is our main culprit. And so this is uh, a, a target for, for therapy development. Um, Today in our panel, there's, there's going to be uh, two types of therapies, therapy strategies discussed. And um, so I, I'm going to give you sort of the background of uh, specifically targeting DUX4 and the molecular biology of that. Um, but there are also a number of really exciting studies that are ongoing in several labs um, that are not necessarily targeting DUX4, but they're working on trying to build muscle and, or, you know, improve strength or grow muscle. Um, so that, that, you know, has potential to be very helpful for FSHD patients while we're still waiting for a, a treatment that can target DUX4 specifically. Okay, so I'm, I'm going, for the rest of my presentation here, I'm going to focus primarily then on the DUX4 targeted therapies. And it's in a very simple concept here, this is what we're talking about. So Dr. Belyev told you about how DUX4 is turned on in muscle when it's not supposed to be. Um, so, you know, I think of it like a light switch, DUX4 is on, and for folks who don't have FSHD, DUX4 is off. So the DUX4 targeted therapies then are simply directed toward trying to switch this, uh, uh, you know, this on switch into an off position. And there are a number of different molecular strategies that we can undertake to, as a field to try to accomplish that. And we can show this, can you play the video please? This is a, a mouse model that we've made. They're, these are these two mice are brothers. They're genetically identical. They both have DUX4 in their uh, DNA. Um, w in one case, I think you could tell the difference between these mice just on the way they walk. This will loop one more time. Um, one mouse has DUX4 on. The other one doesn't. Otherwise, they're identical. So what we want to do as a field now in, in mice and in human cells and then hopefully someday in human beings is to be able to convert that the, the muscles of that mouse that is, has a wobbly gait there, um, turn, the, turn ducks four off in those muscles and hopefully we can, um, uh, you know, make that mouse look and, and behave more like this, um, this more active one. Okay, so let's get into how we're thinking about doing this. Again, Dr. Belly, I've talked about this, but I, again, I'm going to re reiterate some of these key points. What we're, let's just, let's think about you go, going back to, say, your college um, biology class or high school biology class. You, uh, probably a lot of you have had these concepts uh, um, underlying the central dogma of molecular biology. So what is, what is that exactly? Um, it's called the recipe of life. And really what it, what it describes is the way that genetic information encoding in our DNA and our genes is interpreted to make protein. And so Dr. Belly have beautifully walked through this, but I'll, I'll reiterate again that we have genes encoded in our DNA, and those are copied into a molecule of RNA called messenger RNA, or shown here on this slide, mRNA. And that mRNA, and that, that occurs through a process called transcription. Once that mRNA is produced in the cell, 
it can move out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell, and there it becomes a template for the cellular machinery that is required to make proteins. So that, that becomes a, a template to make proteins. And in this case, in the case of DUX4 then, uh, the DUX4 gene is transcribed from DNA into messenger RNA and then made into DUX4 protein, which is toxic to muscle. Okay, so I think I'm, actually in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over this because Dr. Believ beautifully went through the, the sort of flow of, um, you know, the hierarchy of, of DNA all the way down to the gene. And let's just move into, again, some of this is reiteration, what we're talking about in terms of DUX4 and FSHD. So what we have here, again, is the location of DUX4, and I have it pointed there with the red arrow, at the 4Q region at the very end of chromosome 4. So that's, that's the location of DUX4. And now if we look at this in more close, uh, more close detail here, at the very top there we see what is essentially a blow up of the end of chromosome 4. And in that, that image I have three black boxes at the end that are indicated, or the, so th those indicate D4, Z4 repeats that uh, Dr. Belly have mentioned earlier. Next to that is a red box that is the PLAM sequence. Okay, so let's, let's move down then. Um, to the third position here. Now we have th representative of three D4Z4 repeats, and within those, these orange boxes within those, uh, those, those orange boxes indicate an individual DUX4 gene. So each one of those boxes represents a sequence that can encode for the DUX4 protein. But as was mentioned earlier, it's only the very last copy of that D4Z4 array the one that's closest to that red box, the PLAM sequence, that's the one that's key for FSHD. And that's because there is this element here in the PLAM sequence, this poly A signal, that is absolutely required for stabilization of that DUX4 messenger RNA. Without the poly A sequence, the messenger RNA is unstable and it gets degraded. And if it gets degraded, then it can't be made into protein. Okay, so there's one other feature I want to point out at the very bottom there. I have this, this, the label is the anatomy of the last DUX4 repeat. So we have the, the orange box is representing the DUX4 protein coding sequence, and then the, again the red is the PLAM sequence that contains that stabilizing poly A. But just before the, the orange box is this region called the promoter. So every gene has a promoter, and we can think of it in a simple way as an on-off switch for a gene. So if the promoter is on in muscle, then that gene will be on. If the promoter is off, that gene will be off. And there are certain proteins that actually are responsible in the cell for binding different promoters and turning them on or off. Okay, so I wanted to just point out those key features because these are some of the, some of the features of this DUX4 gene that we are thinking about as a field uh, that we can target then for um, therapies. Okay. So um, th I, now I just, I want to go back then to the central dogma and think about how this works for DUX4. Okay, so let's start at the top here. We have DNA, and this DNA in this case is open. So Dr. Belly have talked about how DNA can be painted with methylation, that, and that those methyl events can actually turn, allow the DNA to be accessible so genes within that region can be turned on or off. So in this, in this representation, we have DNA in an open com conformation, and what I have here then are these, these green balls that, that um, represent protein, um, proteins that actually can bind the DUX4 promoter and then activate that gene and turn it on. Okay, so that's, that's a condition now where we have um, DUX4 being at the DNA level bound by some proteins. Those proteins activate that gene and allow it to be turned on. And by doing that then they can, through this process of, called transcription, they can convert DUX4 DNA into a messenger RNA. And so I, I show that here. Um, I'm not going to talk about splicing, but there's some ad additional processing events that actually go on to the messenger RNA to make it a mature form. And those are targetable, but I, it's, I, I don't want to add too much complexity to this, so we'll skip over the splicing part. And just say that that final mature messenger RNA then can be, it moves to the to the cytoplasm and it can be recognized by a protein machinery that converts or copies that thing or uses it as a template to make pro DUX4 protein which is then toxic. Okay, so I think I've hammered on this point now. Um, how, how this methodology works in terms of producing DUX4 protein from the DNA and I think what you can appreciate in, from what I've just told you and what Dr. Believ has said is that there are a number of different steps required to, to lead to DUX4 protein production, which means that there are a number of different steps that we can target 
with drug therapies or molecular therapies to try to interfere with that process and try to prevent DUX4 protein from either being made or having some toxic effects in the cell. Okay, so these are just a couple of examples in my last few slides of how we and others in the field are thinking about trying to manipulate this pathway to prevent DUX4 protein from being expressed. So here's, here's one idea where, I, I, you know, this was already mentioned. If there was a question, a really good question earlier about can you change the methylation status of the DUX4 DNA locus so that um, you shut it down. So if you can add methyl groups to the DUX4 region in FSHD chromosomes, can you just turn off the DNA? So it's, it's not accessible to these proteins that are required to turn on the gene. So that's one strategy that some drug companies and, and other academic labs are trying to pursue. Um, another idea would be, let's say that you're not able to shut down that DNA. The DNA is still open and it can still be transcribed into a messenger RNA. But what if you can disrupt the proteins that are required to bind that on-off switch, that promoter? And so if you can disrupt those, then even if the DNA is open, the gene won't be turned on. Uh, you can think of it the opposite way, where maybe you could increase proteins that are required to turn off the promoter. So these are, these are just ideas, ways that you can manipulate that system. And by doing so, then you would shut down transcription, the messenger RNA wouldn't be made, and therefore the protein wouldn't be made. Another concept that several labs are pursuing is genome editing. And uh, one study that's, that's been published, I think, now is um, editing the poly A signal. So I, I mentioned earlier, and Dr. Belly have mentioned, that the poly A signal is absolutely required to stabilize this DUX4 messenger RNA. And without it, the messenger RNA just degrades on its own. So if you could use some molecular scissors to come in to, to FSHD muscle and chop up that poly A signal, change the sequence so it's not there anymore, then even if DUX4, even if that gene is open and it can be made, if there's no polyadenylation signal, it won't be stabilized and it'll just degrade on its own. So there's, there's an active, um, a, a number of labs active in, in trying to pursue a strategy like that. Something that we're doing in, in my lab and, and Dr. Yuan Chen will talk about in, in her presentation, we're using a couple of different strategies to, tr to actually target the DUX4 messenger RNA. Um, so we can destroy that actually in a very efficient way and we can eliminate um, the DUX4 messenger RNA before it gets made into protein. So again, I think you're just seeing that we can walk down this pathway and try to target at multiple spots. And I think if we can get an, enough people thinking about this in the right way, we can have different nodes that we can attack this at and maybe combine those and just completely wipe out DUX4 altogether. And then finally, protein level. I think this is what a lot of small molecule drug therapies could be, could be targeting. DUX4 um, seems to, well, we, we know that it's, it's a protein called a transcription factor. And what, this, what these types of proteins do is they bind DNA and they can turn on other genes. So it's, it's, it's like I was telling you about these, these proteins earlier that turn on promoters. That's what DUX4 does too. But it turns on promoters of other genes. And it seems to turn on genes that are involved in cell death. So you could think of, um, you know, so there, there are companies now doing drug screens and academic labs doing drug screens that might, maybe, could operate on this type of mechanism shown on this slide where maybe you have a drug that makes, on the one hand, makes the DUX4 protein unstable and it just becomes degraded in the cell. That's one possibility. But what if you could also find a small molecule that sits in this DNA binding pocket of DUX4 and it disrupts that interaction between the DUX4 protein and DNA. So now DUX4 can't function the way it's doing in FSHD. It can't turn on these toxic genes. And therefore, even if the protein's there, it's not functioning in a, in a, a negative way for the muscle. So those are, those, that's a, a, another strategy. And this is by, not, by no means all encompassing. I've only touched on a few ideas for way, the way our field is thinking about tackling this problem. And I just want to end on this, that, um, so I, I mentioned I'd, I've been in this field about a decade now, so fast forward to a decade later in 2018, we now have a gene target, DUX4. We have a number of animal models with muscle disease. We have a number of cell models that were generously um, donated from probably many of you in, the, in this room here. And um, as a result of all of this, now we have a number of promising treatments in the pipeline. And I'm, I'm excited to be it, the, the, the scientific meeting yesterday was fantastic. I mean, there were so many new potential therapies coming together that um, I think it, it's a really exciting time to be um, working on this disease.
So with that, um, I think I'll, I'll just invite our, our speakers up and then we'll, we'll begin with the, the speed dating. <laughs>